Welcome to another HRO Today educational podcast. In this series, we aim to provide you the latest workforce management approaches and best practices in HR. I'm Debbie Bola, Editorial Director of HRO Today Magazine. Today, HR leaders have an unprecedented amount of data at their fingertips. In fact, LinkedIn's Global Recruiting Trends Report indicates that 64% of organizations are using data, and even more, 79% plan to take advantage of it in the next two years. So how can data make a real difference? Leading organizations are finding that data analytics can help better understand the business impact of employee initiatives, it can improve people-related strategies, and even measure employee productivity. According to LinkedIn's report, the most common uses of data in HR are for increasing retention, evaluating the skills staff, predicting candidate success, and understanding talent supply and demand. With so much potential, how can HR get the most from their data? Today, I have an expert here with me to offer some perspective. Ron Walters is Senior Managing Partner at Endeavis. Endeavor's RPO strives to deliver substantial results with quality never being sacrificed for speed. The organization works seamlessly as the recruiting extension of its partners, attracting, connecting, and matching individuals with positions to create successful experiences for candidates and clients alike. Ron, thanks for being with me today. Thank you, Debbie. It's a pleasure. Why don't you go ahead and share with our listeners some of the most important talent acquisition metrics? Yes, thank you once again. We see the most important talent acquisition metrics here at Endeavis as being those that are related to the front end of the process, so looking at how individuals or applicants are entering into your process. We view those talent acquisition metrics in the middle that are your more ratio-driven, which is your presentations and interviews, your interviews to hire, your time to fill, or your time to start. We view those in our world today is those are metrics that are important, but that's part of being in the game. To create a great customer experience, we should be really good at those metrics and knowing what those metrics are. So we're focusing on the front end of the process, and then as you just had mentioned in your introduction, we're focusing on the back end of the process. What are those metrics that are going to look at the retention of the individual and what can be done with those metrics to improve retention of an individual coming into your organization and what can you do to take those metrics and apply them in the process or in front of the process beginning at the top of the process to help ensure you're getting the right type of individual. So some of those metrics would include what is the click-through, what is the quality of the first year of the applicant, what is the application drop-off rate, and then from a retention perspective, what are the key skills and cultural pieces you're looking at, looking at data points, not so much maybe a metric, but a data point that could be helpful with you from a retention perspective. So as an example, here at Endeavis, we do a lot in the healthcare space. And oftentimes, we are helping clients find certified nursing assistants, CNAs, sometimes called SDNAs or patient care assistants. There tends to be a high turnover in that area. So what we do when we work with our clients in this particular area is we talk to them about ways that data drives from a retention perspective. If we see high retention, we start to think, how are we screening people? And what's interesting is in the CNA area, We've gone from when we screen people to looking for CNAs or SDNAs who are nice to assessing CNAs on being helpful. And that small screening difference right there in looking at people that are helpful versus just nice, in the end, as we've seen with our clients, has improved retention because it's a better experience for the applicant and new employee because they're in a role that's more gratifying to them. They create a better experience for the patient that they're caring for because they're being helpful, and they tend to stay with the employer longer because of job satisfaction, because they recognize how helpful they are. So we look at some of these standard metrics, and then what we also do within Endeavis is we look at certain specialty areas when we're trying to make improvements with our clients to create metrics or establish metrics that will make a difference on that retention piece. Right, and you mentioned healthcare, so it makes me curious to think, do they vary by industry? Are you seeing that? We do see some uh, metrics that do vary by industry. They are similar, 
but yet they are different. For our clients, we're always trying to make sure that we have metrics that tie back to a return on investment. And when you're in a corporate environment, I believe you'd want to have metrics that you could bring forth to your leadership to show how you're benefiting the organization, either from dollar savings or retention, having people stay longer. On our side, we look at it from the experience perspective as well as from a return on investment perspective. So when we work with non-healthcare firms, oftentimes one of the things that we're looking at as a, as a metric is are we reducing third-party contingency recruiter costs? So if we're working with a manufacturing firm and maybe they're spending one, two, three, or four million dollars on third-party contingency firms to find great talent for their organization, we're going to take that metric and we're going to want to reduce that metric over time to get it down to the lowest point possible and then always seek continuous improvement. And we do see that we can have a tremendous impact upon that within those organizations. But on the healthcare side, it's a little bit different in that we measure there, we measure the agency costs, and we always want to try and eliminate agency, especially in those clinical roles. But then we also look at overtime and premium pay. In addition to that, oftentimes there are sign-on bonuses. So we look at can we look at the metric of how much money is being spent on sign-on bonuses, and then we look at how we are assessing the person as they're coming into the organization, going to that nice component that I talked about to being helpful component and looking at how can we impact retention on the front end of the process just by screening people differently. So while there's a lot of similarities between that manufacturing and healthcare, there's some unique differences there that exist that we want to make sure that we customize to the organizations that we're talking to. Right, and you mentioned how you can use data and metrics and link them to ROI, retention, linking it to the business, which is very important for HR, linking their initiatives to the business. So could you provide a couple more examples about how HR can use this type of information to guide strategy? Sure. So at the front end of the process, you want to make sure that you're looking at where your, your dollars are being spent for finding people or what are your inbound approach to get people attracted to your organizations and what's the return on those. And those, that data is when you're looking at, in, so you're looking at clicks or you're looking at source of applicant or source of hire because you want to make sure that you're maximizing your resources. And then from there, we encourage organizations that if that number appears to be too high, we always tell people to go out into the marketplace and we certainly offer them what we know from our existing client base, but compare yourself to others and figure out ways to, for improvement. And it might be process modification. It might be new technologies. But clearly looking at those types of recruitment channels and then looking at what exists out there to help reduce costs, but once again, maintain a great experience. We think that's very important. I think from an industry perspective, what we're seeing is this front-end process automation is a big driver of that. So based upon data, we're seeing that process automation still creates a great experience, but can reduce an organization's spend on certain recruitment channels. And things such as programmatic marketing or advertising, that can reduce some spends on job boards. So we, we really encourage organizations who work with us and then just organizations that we, we have conversations with to look at all of these areas because we're big believers that data drives success within your organization, data saves time, and data really becomes a factor that really sets up success for the organization. We're believers that you need to look at data on a regular basis because it really is going to drive your organization because what's driving the organization is ensuring you're getting the right people within your organization and creating a great experience for those people as well as either from an RPO perspective or from a corporate environment, creating a great experience for the hiring manager who's going through the process as well as the entire organization. So examples of that from our perspective is when we look at organizations that maybe have high agency costs in um, the healthcare side of the equation, we're going to go in and first do a deeper dive and look at where are those agency costs at? Are they existing in just a few locations or is it something that's spread across the entire organization? Because oftentimes there's multiple locations that we work with with our clients on the healthcare side. If we see that it's pocketed in certain areas, we're going to use data to determine why those pockets might exist. And when we see the reasoning behind those pockets, then we help our clients or we develop strategies for that. Pockets of information can be things that are out there in the, in the public or it might be something that's internal to the organization. So just as another example, what we've done here at Endeavis is we've kind of created a heat map for LPNs and RNs and CNAs. 
and this is through information gathered from the various state nursing and CNA licensing organizations as well as the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And we created this heat map that shows at a state level, is there surpluses or is there, are there deficiencies or uh, a lack of people with those skill sets in those areas? And certainly, that gives you a big state view. But then you have to draw that down to more of a local view. So a good example would be if you looked at the state of Maryland. The state of Maryland may look like there's plenty of nurses in the state of Maryland at a high level. But when you drill down into the state of Maryland, what you see is you see that there is a high concentration of nurses in, at the RNs and LPNs in the greater Baltimore, Maryland area. But when you look east and when you look west, you see that there is a shortfall of RNs and LPNs in those areas. So what does that mean for an organization if you have locations in the east and the west? It means helping develop strategies that you can look into the local pool. How can you pull from the center or, the, for example, the Baltimore area, pull them out? Or do you have licensure lists that can come over the state lines via the compact and you can gain, get them to be working with you? So there's all these different strategies and approaches you can take on the healthcare side as it relates to things such as that. On the manufacturing side, you can do the same thing. One of the challenges that you have on the manufacturing side is that there's not certifications like on the healthcare side where you can get lists of industrial engineers that is pretty comprehensive. So there's a little bit more work to gather that data and a little bit more reliant on other resources that people may have. But going back to my example on healthcare, so that's a state view, but if you see that you have pockets of retention issues in certain locations, you may find that maybe it's a shortage of the skill set, or you may find that you're screening for the wrong type of individual for the culture, or you may find that maybe there's some things that need to be done internal to the organization at that location that needs to help improve intention. And one of those things may be just find that there's a communication challenge. And here at Endeavor, it's one of the things we do is we do offer some retention programs, not like the consulting firms. We tend to offer more simpler programs. The big one that we often offer to people, especially on the healthcare side, is what we call the five-minute huddle meeting. And what we find is that when we help clients engage with those five-minute huddle meetings every day. So every floor that there's nursing or every location that there's nursing at a long-term care or if it's a home health, pulling the people together and just being transparent and talking to them about what's going on today, we've seen that through the information that we gather can have anywhere to a five to ten-point swing on retention. It's just communication. So there's a lot of different data points out there. There's a lot of different metrics, but there's some customization to metrics that we always encourage every organization to look at those metrics that are important to them. And you brought up cost savings, improving the candidate experience, understanding your talent supply. Are there any other results or benefits that HR can achieve when having a proactive data approach? Yes, I believe that there are other ways that HR can look at the data and determine the best way to approach their strategies. I feel that the big challenge I think that is out there today is I think people understand that technology and process automation and artificial intelligence is coming. Is it good for us or is it not good for us? I think data and pilot programs will help determine if that's the right fit into your organization. I believe there's some level of technology that's important for every organization, but once again, data, what will help you pick the right one? I think you need to put teams together that, that analyze that data and help determine the best technology for your organization. And then look at what do you believe that technology will produce from a candidate experience perspective to the hiring manager perspective to the return on the investment. If it makes it a simpler process, and you can do this through pulse surveys and things of that nature in order to find out how you're going down the right path, if it makes it for a much friendlier or ease from an experience perspective and makes people feel attracted to the organization, that's important. And then there's ways to to look at those benefits, that is through the surveying or through other means of, of communicating with that candidate. The same with that hiring manager, because if you can help the hiring manager prepare to speak to that individual and create the right environment, you're going to win at the end of the day by having a, potentially a great employee. So once again, I think it's, it's customizable, but I think looking at the data, looking at the technologies that are out there, those are important pieces to look at when you're trying to get the right people within your organization and, and then tying it back to what does it mean. So 
kind of taking a shift here in the conversation. What, what tie that back to the brand of the organization so that it, once again it, you're also putting the organization in a great position. Well, thank you, Ron, for joining me today and offering some best practices to leveraging data. Until next time, listeners.